So hello everybody. Uh, my name is uh, Rafael Bononesque. Uh, for those who do not uh, know me, uh, just a few words about who am I and what I'm, am I doing here today. So I've been like a contributor to Open Food Facts since uh, 2018, and I've mostly worked on uh, backend and machine learning uh, projects. So my very first project was actually on uh, category auto the automatic categorization of products, which was the very uh, first thing that I went into production. And uh, from this very little project, uh, we developed um, um, a service, like a machine learning service called Robotoff. And uh, thanks for Alex on to the credit. <laughs> he found like this new image of Robotoff, which quite summarizes what it makes. It takes like raw images of, uh, of products and uh, other information and extract insights or uh, some, yeah, some information that can be automatically applied to the product. So it helps uh, to uh, get like uh, better data quality and to uh, help uh, contributors to, uh, to uh, uh, fill the product uh, detail pages. So I will focus on two, uh, two uh, current uh, quite exciting projects that we are going to, to tackle in the next coming months. Uh, the first is uh, the universal logo detection. So many of you may not know about this, um, but it's, um, uh, it's quite simple, actually. On product images, we detect everything that looks like a logo, a brand, a label, any yeah, visual element that may be of interest. And we look, uh, we, so we extract these logos for every product on the database, and we look for uh, logos that look similar. Uh, in uh, all these databases of logos. And this way, you can, uh, on Hunger Game, which uh, Alexandre will present uh, very soon, uh, you can say, okay, this uh, logo uh, uh, is associated to this category, to this label. You can annotate these logos. And we have like 73,000 annotations so far, so it's quite like a, a popular game. And it works really well. So, so here we have like one logo, and uh, on Hunger Game, you have like uh, what's the most similar logos in the database. And for some logos, it works pretty well. You know, this way you can annotate all these logos and you say, okay, this is like the U brand logo. And this way you update uh, immediately all these products with the uh, U brand. So it's quite an effective way to add information to Open Food Facts. But uh, for some other logo, it's not working that well. So it has been developed like a, as a proof of, of concept uh, two years ago, uh, but there is many long-hanging fruits we can use to uh, switching the model, which uh, is used to to say which logo is similar to which one, and uh, we get like a huge, uh, a huge uh, performance bump by just switching this model. And there are many other ways uh, to actually improve the result. <laughs> Yeah, we, we, I can take uh, some, uh, some questions in the end. Um, and uh, it's actually, uh, so this project has a great potential because it's very scalable. You don't have to uh, label uh, every uh, logo, uh, categorize every logo, and uh, um, train a new machine learning model for, for each logo type. And one of the major goals of Gabriel internship, uh, which, is, uh, which is just here, he joined us a few weeks ago. <laughs> is to use, <coughs> to use so a better model to quantify how logos are similar and also to make the s search faster. And the second project I wanted to uh, talk about, because it's uh, really trendy lately, uh, it has been, um, uh, we, we've discussed a lot about categorization and how categories are important for open facts. Uh, so we have, uh, like automatic categorization, no, uh, categorization model uh, in, uh, in Robotoff. And here is the uh, interface on Hunger Game to categorize automatically the product. And uh, we have many, many categories prediction. Uh, and category is especially important because uh, we need the category to uh, compute nutri score, to compute eco score. And um, it has been quite effective so far because we have 140,000 categories added uh, by contributors through Hunger Games, the mobile app, 
or uh, through uh, the Open Food Facts website. And, uh, <laughs> and we currently use two methods to, uh, to compute the categories. A simple matching uh, method, which is quite effective, but which needs to be improved, and like a neural network which can predict categories for almost every product, but which sometimes is a bit too generic. And uh, we have some plans to, uh, in the near future, to improve both methods and to hopefully, in a few months, uh, categorize at least uh, a subset of the products automatically. Because this is the main uh, concern currently. Many products are uncategorized, and uh, we need to scale, uh, to scale up and uh, to to find a way to automate this process. And for that. Uh, I will focus on the neural network categorizer. We plan to use many more input data because usually the data we have uh, is not uh, sufficient. The data the, the model uses is not sufficient to categorize uh, the information. We only use product name and ingredient list, and we plan to test like OCR test, nutrition facts, and maybe as a whole image, it may help uh, categorize better the products. And uh, yeah, I think I'm done. <laughs> yeah, you had a question about the logos, right? No, no, it's easy. Hmm? For the? So the question was related to the, um, to actually I was curious here, how off is that basically knowing that the distance is displayed in this slide are of 74 and on the other slide where the match is perfect, the distance is 67. And uh, I was wondering how, what's a maximum of distance basically. Like I was wondering, for example, how similar the algorithm finds the cheesy stuff with uh, Fresmont, for example. Is 74 a large distance or is it a small distance in uh, terms of uh, similarity? We, we, we're not really interested uh, in uh, the magnitude of the distance. Only the rank is uh, matters most for, okay. for this kind of uh, queries. It's, uh, it's uh, the, um, the Euclidean distance, the squared Euclidean distance between the embeddings of each logo, which is used uh, to compute the distance. So we have like vectors, and it just likes the, yeah, the Euclidean distance between these vectors, which is used for to, to find the, the nearest ones. OK. Hmm. No, it's just, yeah. yeah, sure. Doesn't necessarily answer my, I'm not there. We'll <laughs> get technical for us. We'll get uh, <laughs> way too technical. <laughs> um, it's fine. OK, but, yeah, but there is uh, only the rank matters for this, uh, for this uh, project. We, yeah, yeah. we don't really uh, care about the magnitude. OK. Uh, um, I have a question. So um, in order to, if, when you ask the user a question via Hunger Games, if the user says, yes, this is the right logo, does that mean every product that has that logo gets updated in the uh, uh, database? Well, for, for the logo game, we don't ask questions. We have one random logos, and you have like the ne the most common logos, okay. and you can annotate uh, the logo, the current logo, and all the rest, and put like a type and an annotation. So it's quite different from the rest of Hunger Game, where you have like one question binary: is it this or is it not? And if you say yes, it annotates the product. Okay. And then, how does that update the Open Food Facts database? Oh, for the logos, if you add like I don't know, if you say okay, this, these logos are like organic logos, yeah. it will add the organic label to the associated products. Okay, so that could be if you do one classification of a logo, you could potentially update thousands of products. Yeah, you could uh, dozens, I guess, because you you have to select all of them and you you have like a limited space on your screen. Okay. But yeah, you can. That's why it's we, we have seventy four thousand. Updates because uh, it's really easy to select like uh, 100 logos which are all the same and say okay this is like uh, this brand or this is this logo or this label. So amazing. it's quite quite effective. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Great. <laughs> mm. 
Mm, what, what kind of? Labeling. Yeah. Example, we have a product, we give them labels. Yes. Can they be also used as a recognition and different forms and valid labels? By, f by valid, you mean uh, valid official ones? Yeah, we, we detect like uh, elements uh, where there are these uh, fake labels, like I don't know, uh, uh, good for your health, or um, with like, uh, a s yeah, we, we detect this kind of stuff. But um, we detect them, but currently we don't do anything with this information. We we are only on our side interested in uh, labels that are in the categories, like I don't know, organic labels or uh, Demeter labels, these kind of things, and. Um, even if in open food facts we do have the, we do sometimes uh, save the information about like this uh, self-claimed label, uh, it's currently not extracted on robot side. On robot of side, yeah. Mm -hmm. We put it in a protein enzyme, for example. Yeah, we, we could uh, do that too. Mm -hmm. Hello. Sorry. Uh, to, uh, quick. Um, we had an idea of uh, adding all the metadata for any logo in the labels taxonomy. So you can add it and then we can mark up any strange labels, wrong labels, uh, and make a kind of greenwashing uh, statement on the product. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all good? Cool. Um, I just had a question. Uh, on your logo slide, you said you um, yourself, um, you're looking for a new model for a logo's um, mm -hmm. detection to replace for a model. Where does one look for a model? Are those models already created out there? And you can just take a model already created and place it in your system and it works? Or do you have to create a model yourself? Yes, yeah, so actually we do have two models uh, in place. One, uh, the, the one which is not changing, is like the logo detection model. It's like an object detection model. You have the, an image, and it just gives you bounding boxes of all the logos that may be of interest. It's very broad. By logo, we mean every uh, picture element that may be of interest. And after, so the second model is the one we are going to change, is uh, an embedding model. It's a classic computer vision model. You give uh, to it an image and uh, you receive an embedding which is just a vector. It's a string of number. Yeah, yeah, you, you can see this way exactly. And once you get this string of numbers, you can say, okay, this, these numbers are closer to this one and th this is the model we're going to change, the second one. Okay. And, and it's all of the shelf. It's already uh -huh. pre-trained models which are, we are going to use. There are other techniques you can use uh, to train the new models to learn to uh, s to learn um, that two uh, logos of the same category must be uh, close to each other and two logos of different categories mu must be far apart. But we are not using this currently. We are just taking yeah an off-the-shelf model. Okay, how open is that uh, kind of machine learning model market? Can you get those for free and open yeah, source? Yeah, it's uh, it's academic research, so yeah, it's free. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So, uh, Raphael's intervention um, presentation was more focusing um, on the back end, on the, um, the analysis of the photos, and um, Alexandre uses this work to uh, propose um, a tool called Hunger Game um, that he will explain what he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> 